Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking once more about the tropics. We're going to be talking about Tropical Storm Beta as well as Hurricane Teddy. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think we will have our next hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean? How long from now? Let me know why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, what we're going to do now is just get on with the video. We're going to take a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. This has always the, been the first screen that we take a look at lately for the past few weeks, and it really just works because it gives you guys a great overview of what's happening. We have Tropical Storm Beta there. Not looking too good. A lot of dry air, a lot of shear there, but we're still going to receive some impacts there for Texas and Louisiana, especially a lot of rainfall. We'll talk about the impacts there in just a little bit. Teddy is looking to head directly north where that storm is going to impact Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, areas along the east coast of Canada there. You're going to want to be on the lookout for some impacts along the east coast of Canada. Even Maine going to receive some pretty large waves, uh, which could obviously, you know, if you live along the coast could bring some impacts. But uh, impacts are going to be minimal for the northeastern United States, although very, very tall waves are going to be associated with this storm. As you can see, we have a 60% chance of development up there in the middle of the Atlantic. We also have post-tropical cyclone Wilford that is about to die out. In the next update, I don't expect that Wilford will be there any longer. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for that 60% chance area. Uh, we're going to take a look at the cone forecast for all of our other systems, and then we're going to start getting into some model guidance and then talking about the impacts for... Um, our tropical storm beta, and then we're also actually going to talk a little bit about the overall hurricane season, all coming up. All right, now first things first, here we go. We're taking a look at our 60% chance region there. You can see it's heading directly eastward, looking to possibly develop, then head towards Europe. We're going to need to watch that one closely. Uh, it's not impossible. We have seen situations like that before. Uh, you can see that we have our last update here for remnants of Wilfred, uh, and this storm is definitely expected to completely be dissipated very, very shortly. Here's Hurricane Teddy, expected to be uh, pretty much a post-tropical cyclone by time we're reaching Nova Scotia and Newfoundland there, but still going to bring impacts. We have a tropical storm watch there along the coast of Nova Scotia. We're going to want to watch that one very, very closely because we could see some coastline impact from that one as well as some heavy rainfall. Nothing major, of course, but still going to be a pretty big nuisance storm. Could bring some actual impacts along the east coast of Canada. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at Tropical Storm Beta's comb forecast. Then we're going to start taking a look at the uh, spaghetti model guidance for Hurricane Teddy, the intensity guidance for Hurricane Teddy, and then we're going to start talking about beta, the satellite imagery, spaghetti models, intensity guidance, impacts, all sorts of things like that. All right, now here's the cone forecast for Tropical Storm Beta, and as you can see, uh, we're only expected to remain a tropical storm. If you remember correctly, a few days ago, we did think there was a chance for this one to be a hurricane. That is really dissipated as there's more shear and more dry air in the area than anticipated. This one's going to remain a tropical storm uh, until it comes inland into Texas a little bit. Then it's going to become a tropical depression and then generally turn eastward and head towards Louisiana. This could bring some heavy rainfall along the coast of Texas and Louisiana. I expect that to be the biggest impact. We could also see three to six feet of storm surge. So if you're in very, very low line areas that could also be a concern for you as well we have tropical storm warnings along all of those blue areas where you can see tropical storm type impacts also a tropical storm watch along that little tiny yellow area there along the texas coast now let's go ahead and move on here's the spaghetti model guidance for hurricane teddy as you can see we're expected to hit nova scotia directly and then also newfoundland going to be hit directly although we should see a weaker storm by that point potentially heading towards southern greenland there probably will not be a tropical storm whatsoever by that point will probably just be in uh, a normal low pressure system obviously as it heads that far north but that's pretty interesting here's the intensity guidance for teddy as well as you can see we're actually a category two storm right now we're going to remain a category two at least through the next 24 hours and then we're going to start seeing a drop off in intensity should be a tropical storm within the next 48 hours or slightly after and then should be uh, below tropical storm status within the next 72 to 84 hours. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for our tropical storm beta, then take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for beta. 
intensity model guidance for beta, and then also we're going to start talking about impacts. Most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, as well as the probability of tropical storm force winds. The storm surge map, we're going to take a look at the total rainfall map, the flooding risk, and then we're going to start talking about the overall season, the sinking and rising air. Unfortunately, I have very bad news in that department coming up. All right, now here's the satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Beta. And as you can see, it's a very, very small storm. It's just like a thunderstorm there offshore of Texas. This one is rapidly actually regaining its convection, though, which would indicate that we're going to see some heavier rainfall really move on to Texas. Winds are going to be quite minimal, I would say, for the impact. Storm surge could be... Uh, m slight to moderate, I would say probably more on the slight side, unless you're just very, very low lying. I don't think you will feel much impacts from the storm surge. I think rainfall is going to be our biggest factor here. Here's the spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, uh, it's going to make landfall within the next 24 hours. Of course, we've known this for a while now that tonight it's going to make landfall at some point. And then it's going to curve back eastward, uh, kind of skirt along the Texas coast and then hit portions of Louisiana as well. Again, still uh, rainfall is going to be the biggest impact there. So just prepare for some potential for close to 10 inches of rain. Uh, going to be quite minimal there. Uh, we really dodged a bullet here. Having that sheer and dry air in place really helped out. Uh, we're going to have a weaker tropical, tropical storm as opposed to a hurricane potentially hitting these regions. All right, now here's the intensity guidance. And as you can see, this one is expected to dramatically weaken uh, into, well, less than a tropical storm within the next 24 hours. Most of that is due to the dry air and the shear, but also due to the fact that it's making landfall and isn't going to be over water anymore. So we have multiple things really leading to the fact that this one's going to weaken dramatically, should be below tropical storm status within the next 36 hours for sure. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about the impacts for Tropical Storm Beta, and then we're going to talk a tiny bit about the overall season, like I said. All right, now here is the most likely arrival time of Tropical Storm Force winds. And as you can see, by 8 a.m. in that first ring, we're expected to see the Tropical Storm Force winds be around. And then that first dashed ring there says Monday at 2 p.m., so we see even further areas. You're really going to need to just find your area and look at the line that you're at. That's going to be your arrival time of Tropical Storm Force winds. And then the colors, you can see on the bottom right there, that indicates the percent chance of having Tropical Storm Force winds. If you're in the purples or reds, you're basically looking at a very, very good chance that you're going to at least see Tropical Storm Force winds. The golds and yellows, that's where you're at about 50 percent and then the greens that's where you have a less than 50 percent chance of having tropical storm force winds all right now here's the storm surge map again pretty slight we have one to two feet down there for very very far southern texas coast then we start to get to one to three feet two to four three to five by the time we're reaching galveston bay uh, and then two to four feet generally for the very western coast of louisiana and then one to three feet there for the eastern regions there in Louisiana. So again, if you're not really low lying, I don't think this is going to be too much of a factor for you personally. Here is the total rainfall that is anticipated by the storm. If you're in the lighter shade of green, you're at one to two inches of rain. If you're in the darker green, you're at two to four inches of rain. If you're in the yellow, you're at four to six inches of rain. If you're in the oranges, you're at six to 10 inches of rain. Again, uh, those areas are going to be possibly approaching 10 inches of rain. Uh, and this is actually really good news. We originally were anticipating to have 10 to 15 inches of rain possible for some regions. That has really dissipated to this point, which is good news for the flooding, obviously, to have less rainfall going on. Here is our chance of flash flood. And as you can see, we have a marginal 5% risk within the green area, a slight 10% risk within the the yellow region there, and then we have a 20% moderate risk of flash flooding within those two red regions. So for the portions of Texas coast and then portions of eastern Louisiana, uh, obviously some of these regions have seen a lot of rainfall recently from some other tropical systems. So this isn't the most, uh, this isn't the best timing in the world, but I think that uh, since we're expecting some minimal amounts of rain, you know, six to 10 is pretty minimal for a tropical system. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, so I generally think that's good news overall. Let's take a look at that overall season, like I said, real quick. And this is today, September 21st. I can't believe we're almost to October. It feels like September was just the snap of a finger. We have sinking air in the Atlantic. And again, I've talked about this all season. This is very, very bad for tropical development. We've had some recently, but really it could have been more. We have sinking air overall in the tropics. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is this, this is by October 7th. We get the greens back. We get the rising air motion throughout all of the Atlantic, and that's going to lead to a spike in tropical activity if this is the case. We still have the very warm sea surface temperatures. 
Uh, this is going to be a disaster if this occurs, and we're going to see another very active period possibly. Uh, we're going to get well into the Greek names this year, guys. I really, really think we will. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you want October to go? And Gregory Woodbury said, I hope that October will be crisp and cool, less rain in the North Carolina Piedmont. I couldn't agree anymore, and really, if October went the same way that September went, I would be extremely satisfied. I hope to see a lot of 60s and a lot of 50s. Uh, I'm just ready for the cooler weather overall after the hot, hot summer we had here in Virginia, at least. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Mad Birds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, Cindy Klein, Alicia Davis, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Oh, as always, be sure to check the National Hurricane Center for official guidance on what to do during these dangerous, dangerous storms. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.